My name is Nick Jordan. Um, I'm currently based out of the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota. I grew up west of here uh, in a small town called Delano, Minnesota. And I'm an artist. I sing, I write, I, I dance, I produce. Um, and just kind of like your quintessential 2019 independent artist, kind of wearing every hat I can because I have to. I moved to St. Paul to attend the University of St. Thomas. I had a full tuition scholarship um, and I was like, I'm going to be a musician. And I didn't really know how that was going to go about, but I kind of always knew from even like that age, the power of like intention and manifestation and just putting it out there and knowing that things were going to find me. I started producing almost like out of necessity. And even still, I feel like my knowledge of like piano and like chords and stuff is like elementary in my opinion but I know the sounds that I like I know that I like extended harmonies I know that I like major minor sevenths ninths elevenths like mixing in that kind of chord progression things that just kind of like make you feel so um, I was able to at least like tune in and uh, be able to get myself by my production used to be really bad and now it's like okay to me right now we're at my house this is kind of just my own studio setup. So yeah, when I'm doing it this way, I try not to think too much or get caught up in the sounds and just get to vibe more so. I make music, so I serve part-time, but I kind of make it like a, um, like a personal thing to not spend more than 20 hours a week inside of the restaurant. So uh, I feel fortunate to be able to budget and like make that work with the rest of my freelancing and serving. Hello, we're at rehearsal right now with the one of a kind, just <laughs> Ray Monet, St. Paul, Minnesota, at an undisclosed location because I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> but we make it work. We make it work. <laughs> my wonderful dancers, Krishlo and yeah. Desiree. Yeah. Rehearsing for a show in um, Wednesday, Thursday, four days. Desiree is filling in for my friend Albert. She is wonderful and learning a lot under a short amount of time. He's really easy to work with. He's my brother. Um, he's very open. It makes you feel comfortable. How did you meet Nick? Um. It was at a, uh, a headphone party. That's funny. <laughs> he was dancing with some headphones on. I think we were dancing to the same thing because you had to click between DJs. Mm -hmm. And somebody was playing some wax. <laughs> and he was playing something that I was feeling. I was vibing with him. I was like, this guy can dance. And we just <laughs> um, linked up from there. And he had a dance that he wanted to do for the uh, school. And he just was like, yo, I have a part for you. And you're going to do it. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, you ain't got to show up to rehearsal, just use your internet. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared of shit. <laughs> but we're here now because of it, so I mean, it's for some reason. So I'm good. <laughs> Thinking I could change a player's game, yeah, I was close. Changing all that for the night, I'ma go out for the night. Find a level, do me right. Won't come back to us, he say, say. I'ma turn off my phone, but I won't be alone. I can be petty too, I can be petty too. Petty and video we just watched was my video Petty. Um, that visual was directed by my friend John Mark, um, styled by my friend Lisa Marie. Uh, I had a lot of my friends in it, um, like Chris Lowe, Gittins, Albert Conte, Desiree Cox, Russell Vernell Smith Jr. Um, the song was written by me and then produced by 
myself and my friend Luke Deluxe. And I love that visual. I'm very grateful to John Mark and everyone who made that a possibility. Oh, shot by John Mark's brother, Gabe, Young Vision Films. Yeah, just really great, really great production, really good experience. There's a lot of greatness that exists, um, even on like a local level here. Luke Deluxe, who's really helped me grow as a producer. Um, of course, my, my girls in Asia, my friend Maxi, my dancers Christian and Albert, also Desiree and Russell, of course Boo Boo, who's just the future of everything good here, um, my dear friend the nunnery, my friend Anju is someone who I've been jamming with and hanging out with a lot and she's just like incredible. But there's a lot of incredible artists here that's just like I feel like my my main circle right now. Devada Don, so incredible. Um, great, great people. Like for lack of better words, like I'm a little comfortable right now and it, it can create some like creative stagnancy. Hmm. I'm not even sure if that's a word, but I created it. I feel I feel kind of stagnant, right? So I'm hoping that with the release of something new, um, and amongst other things I'm planning for this year, that it'll kind of like kick me in the ass and um, just create a new chapter. Well, I started kind of in the scene as you know Nick Jordan and. Um, performing around and being a part of things. Kind of at the same time, I was really coming into my own, like my identities, like, and all of them, you know, like my queerness for sure. Um, but also as, you know, a black person, person of mixed race. And um, I, I really, really value Minneapolis and the, the art scene here because I kind of was allotted the time to, mm, grow and find my identities within myself and become more comfortable as I was on stage at the same time and being supported, you know, and um, having an ensemble of like like identities and like minds too, um, that just, it helped me, it helped me exponentially. So in a way, like, I don't know how I'd even be feeling about myself or know how much confidence I would have in my own being as a queer black artist had it not been for coming up in Minneapolis, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. The first EP I released, um, somehow, like a City Pages writer, caught wind of my release show and ended up calling me and interviewing me about it. And I remember so badly wanting to, um, like, dive deeper into, like, the subject matter of it, but I feel like I went through kind of just so much growing up surrounding, like, my sexuality and how I identified that I couldn't, I was almost afraid of that, like overshadowing um, the artistry and the content. But that's just where my mind was. This was like three plus years ago, you know? I think things have shifted dramatically even in that short amount of time in my awareness that it, it never mattered and it doesn't matter. But at the time that was like, I, I didn't even realize I had so much repression and so much almost trauma that I was like working through, you know? <laughs> but I just, I will never forget that, that phone call. She was so nice and like, kind of trying to push me and I just had a wall, you know? And so it, the, the article is great with what I gave her, but I definitely could have gave her more, you know? Like there are definitely more interesting experiences on that surrounding queerness that I could have touched on, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't born in Minneapolis St. Paul. Like I came from no like creative ambition, like in, in the sense of like wanting to, you know, be in the industry like, yeah. as a whole. like. That wasn't like around me at all. You know, I just had that goal and that dream and I came into Minneapolis and I somehow like maneuvered and like found my way. I found some people that really loved and supported me. I have performed, you know what I mean? Like I performed in the main room. I've done like all these like really great things. Minneapolis is great, you know, like I actually love it here. It's not hard to leave something when something's bad. It's hard to leave when something's good and know that in your like heart and your spirit want something greater for you. Mm -hmm. What's up everyone? Uh, this is Nick Jordan and uh, this is Staring at the City. 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 Are you staring at the city?